For the recalculators now, we're going to get started with a practice exercise today, and you'll get to use your calculator doing practice exercise 10. So once you have your booklet, wait just a moment. You can go ahead and turn there and wait till everyone's ready before we get started. So you may use your calculator on practice exercise number 10. Three problems. The middle problem has two answers. And there are two different answers you should get for the middle problem. And you may begin. Take a look at these together. And Chris was first. Chris, it says the odometer on Missy's car read 23,678 before her trip. After the trip, it read 25,127. How many miles was her trip? Round the answer off to the nearest 10 miles. Uh, I messed up. I added the two numbers together. So I was subtracting the 23,000 from the 25,000. All right. So we go to. So yes, yeah, she didn't have a 25,000 mile trip. Uh, just how many miles was the trip? Second was Ethan. Uh, 1,449, but I rounded off 1,450 miles. There we go. 1,450 miles, our answer. All right, so Ethan will stay with you. The speedometer of a car should be lubricated every 16,000 kilometers. I guess that's for people who don't live in the USA. A, how many times should the speedometer have been lubricated if the car has 68,000 kilometers? 4.25. Can you lubricate something 0.25 times? I don't know what that means, so. <laughs> okay, lubricate means like you put engine oil in or you spray like WD-40 oh. on the on the pivot point. 
That was like four? Four times. There we go. Four times. It should have been lubricated at 16,000 kilometers, 32, 48, and 64. All right. After how many more kilometers should the speedometer be lubricated again? 81,000. Let's see. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis, are you good so far? You are not. Audrey, are you good so far? After how many more kilometers should the speedometer be lubricated again? Oh, my. <laughs> Kendall, you're good so far. Okay, Chris? Uh, after 12,000. After 12,000 more. Okay, so it was lubricated at 16,000, assuming this was done properly. Lubricated again at 32. Lubricated again at 48. Lubricated again at 64. We're currently at 68,000, but it was just lubricated 4,000 kilometers ago, right? The next lubrication should come at 80,000, correct? How many more kilometers does it take for where we are now to where we need the next lubrication? Does that make sense for the 12,000? Um, all right, so candy's off the table, but let's go to um, Genesis for our last one. One city has a policy to give speeders a ticket at a rate of $29 per mile traveled above the speed limit. When Missy passed through this city's Passed through the city, she was caught speeding. Officer said she was going 43 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone. How much was her ticket? No, let's go to Kendall. 232. $232. She was eight over. You had seven over, so just bad subtraction there. Yeah, probably eight over. They're probably not actually going to pull you over, but. Uh, um, if they did, that's a pretty steep fine for only going eight over, I'm just saying. Um, uh, there was one time I was driving out in uh, towards central Georgia, and it's on the highway, it's 65 miles an hour straight through. I was cruising 65, 65, 65. Every now and then there's a little town you slow down. Once you get out of the town, you speed back up. Well, uh, you know how like if your parents are driving down the road, and is there any, any been driving here yet? You drive, okay, a couple yeah, of you drive. Right. You know how when you're driving, you see a red light ahead of you, you start to slow down. Yeah. But if the light turns green before you get there, there's not other cars just sitting there, you usually kind of just speed back up. Well, I was kind of an autopilot. I see the red light, so I slow down. But I'm also slowing down because I'm coming into a town. Well, then I see the light turn green, and my brain doesn't register that I was slowing down for two reasons. My brain's just, hey, I was slowing down. Red light, it's green, so I speed back up. I wasn't up to 65, I was up to about 55. And whew, just blow through this intersection. Suddenly it dawns on me, there's buildings around. And then I see a police officer, and then I see in my rear view mirror him turn and follow me. I'm like, oh my goodness. Because right there was 35, and I was doing about 55. Oh man. That's and so, driving. yeah, I was about 20, he had me about 57, so I was about 22 over. Got a $157 fine. But that was 22 over. So, I mean, eight over and 232 bucks, that is a speeding ticket right there. Bless her heart. All right, so anyway, I promise I wasn't doing it on purpose, wasn't trying to break the law, but that was one bad oh. speeding ticket. <laughs> but you're only fine for it, going 20 something oh. over. I thought Reagan was driving for miles over was a night in jail. I don't know, I don't know. Anyway. All right, well, let me go collect those from you, and uh, if you would, just have some, uh, some paper out. You don't need your notebooks, but we do want to review some things whoop, that you put in your notebook recently. We've studied all kinds of things lately. Uh, we talked a lot about triangles and, you know, the sum of all the angles in a triangle and interior angles related to the exterior angle and how an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. Talk about different kinds of triangles, you know, obtuse triangles, acute triangles, and right triangles. And we asked all those questions yesterday, so we're not going to do that to Audrey again. <laughs> and we asked, talked about isosceles triangles. Don't laugh, you next. And, uh, <laughs> and we talked about you know, who me was. <laughs> and uh, equilateral triangles and scalene triangles and all that stuff. And then we kind of moved off the triangle thing. And uh, we got into talking about um, geometric plane figures bounded by really any number of straight lines. And what do we call those figures? Genesis? Polygons. Very good. Polygons. And we said uh, the, the terminology is very similar. You know, so if a polygon appears to rest on a side, that side would be called the base. And 
The um, the lines, of course, as I said, are called sides. The place where the sides come together, Chris, are called vertices. vertices and uh, but we did have some terms that were different, right? For instance, we you know interior exterior angle those were all the same. But we said that in a triangle, all the vertices are connected already. But in other polygons, vertices may not all be connected. So if we were to connect non-consecutive vertices, a line joining non-consecutive vertices, Ethan, would be called a Audrey? Diagonal. A diagonal, remember, joins non-consecutive vertices. We also said there's two broad categories of polygons. Uh, what are the normal-looking polygons, where all the angles are acute angles and obtuse angles and right angles? You can measure with your protractor. We would call these genesis. This is complex. Not complex, but you're really close. Um, oh, convex. Convex. There we go. She got it back in there. Convex polygons. Good. And then there's polygons that you really couldn't measure the angles very well with a protractor because, well, concave polygons have at least one, what kind of angle? Uh, if a polygon is concave, it has at least one reflex. reflex angle. Good, one reflex angle, it would be a concave polygon. So we said, for our purposes, we're going to assume we're dealing with convex polygons, no reflex angles in there. And we made some conclusions yesterday about some different things with these polygons. We drew several polygons, remember, and we measured up the angles and we added them all together. And some of us did a good job and some of us were way off. And, uh, and I told you, if there's, you guys are looking at each other, uh, I told you that if there are three sides, we kind of conclude it adds up to 180 degrees. Or in other words, adds up to a straight angle. And then we showed that if we had four sides, our answers were kind of all over the place, but they were generally in the middle 300s. I said it should be exactly 360. You know, I'm just like, okay, the teacher taught us that. Good. And then we did five sides, and answers were a little bit more spread out. And I said, well, if we did it perfectly, it should be exactly 720 degrees, or 540 degrees. Excuse me, for the five sides. Sorry, my brain was going six sides. Five sides should be exactly 540 degrees. You know, like, oh, okay, the teacher taught us something. And then I was like, and if we had six sides, we all measured that, and some of the answers were really crazy. I said, it should be exactly 720 degrees. You know, like, oh, okay. And I'm like, but I don't want you to take my word for it. Really, truly, in this class, I don't want you to just take my word for much of anything. In fact, really, truly, in life, I don't want you to take people's word for too much of anything. Now, that doesn't mean you're a skeptic and you believe absolutely nothing. Um, and, and I don't want you to be cynical <laughs> of people. Have a good day. Did they really mean that? <laughs> I think they don't want me to have a good day. I think that person's a jerk. No, I don't want you to do that either, okay? You know, but, but don't just absorb things and say, oh, well, that must be so. Take it with a grain of salt. Do a little more digging. This is one of the reasons why in 11th grade, in your editorials that you do for U.S. history, you're supposed to consult a couple of sources. Don't just take one news article source that's coming next year, okay, for those of you in 10th grade. Your current events grow a little bit. They get a little bit bigger. And instead of just, here's what a news source says, here's what the news is, here's two different news sources. They have some different details. Can we extrapolate what is true, what may be opinion, what maybe really is factual, and therefore what I can conclude to perhaps be the truth based on what this evidence says? Um, so taking things with a grain of salt might be a good way uh, to put it. So I said, well, let's just not take my word for it. Let me show you why I tell you it's got to be this. And so we said the reason we can show it's got to be 180 for triangle, well, we kind of made that conclusion, if we assume that's true. I'm kind of basing off an assumption there. Why quadrilateral four sides has to have 360? Why pentagon or five sides has to have 540? Why hexagon or six sides has to have 720? What did we do to show that that had to be the case? Chris? Because n and n minus 3. Well, we came up with some formulas, yeah, but we, we derived the formulas after I showed why they had to be these amounts. Try again? Because you made the uh, thing on the board, the, um, I the name of the uh, actual like, type of thing was. Um, we well, made a chart, chart yeah, yeah, but, but, but showed, like, before we made the chart, I showed you why Pentagon has to have 540 in the sum. But why? Why was it Come that on. happen? What did we do? You have to go through all the, everything we did yesterday. Got to do it again? Because uh, if you go to the center of the polygon, is it similar to that? 
Well, if we have a regular polygon, we have a center. There's not technically a true center of uh, the other polygons, at least not that's easily findable. Well, that's true. They do add up to 360 in the middle of the center. But I'm just saying in general, any regular, po any polygon, not, it's not regular, forgive me. Um, <laughs> that word actually has meaning now. Any polygon. Okay, so this, that's not, that's not a regular polygon, right? It's, it's just a pentagon. But I said I can show you, and I showed you yesterday, why it has to have 540 degrees. Not that, well, I got close to 540, so that's what it must be. But it has to be 540. What did I do to show that? Well, again, if it's not a regular polygon, there isn't technically that center. Like, if it were regular, we just bisect all the angles. Right, that would go to the center. I drew diagonals from a vertex. And we said, if I can draw these diagonals, I'm forming triangles which have the 180. So by drawing two diagonals, it gave me three triangles, therefore three straight angles, which is 540. So it's based on the premise of basically breaking the polygon down into triangles, which is why we studied the triangle in depth first, and then grew to other polygons because once you understand the triangle, now you can understand the bigger polygons as well. So yes. wait, we're basing an assumption on an assumption. We're not basing an assumption on an assumption. We're basing a conclusion on an assumption that is not yet proven. It is true. We're right. However, it's been observed multiple times. So it's a theory. So it, it is a it is a fairly sound theory, right? We've, we've, we've concluded it seems to be every time we do these triangles, we keep getting 180. We didn't just do it that one day, right? We did it multiple days where we were given two angles. So what should the third angle be? Hey, yeah, that's, that's pretty much accurate. Within, within that margin of error, we seem to get 180. If that's true, if we accept that as being true, and again, I am emphasizing it as an assumption, then yes, this would have to be 540. Now, the good news is later on, we'll prove it must be exactly a straight angle, therefore exactly 180 degrees. But that's coming later. For now, it is technically just an assumption, so you can't prove it yet. We don't have the tools yet. But yes, we're basing this conclusion off of an assumption we've all agreed seems to have a lot of merit to it. Yes? So this is kind of a weird analogy, but evolution is an assumption, correct? It is an assumption. You can't prove it, just like you can't prove right. it has to be 40 or Right. The difference is people don't universally agree that it has merit. <laughs> they, they, they go to great lengths to argue against what should be fairly observable. For instance, in our case, we had observation. Ass assuming the protractors were not made faulty, first of all, okay, that somebody in there like, <laughs> let me mess up these kids, set the dial to print them just a little bit off. All their degrees are wrong. You know what a quirk is in Adam, right? Right, yeah. Right. That's, That's not observed. Yeah, it's not observed. It's an assumption, but everyone kind People of have kind of universally agreed. Right. This seems to explain it. At least it's the best explanation we have for now. For now. Right. right. So te technically, we, there's no way to know for a fact that that is right. There is, but not yet. What do you mean by you need, that? You need more knowledge before we can prove it. We, 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 we will prove so it. So it is proven. It is proven, yes. We just haven't proven it yet. So, it's still so you're still kind of, you're for, for technically for now, it's still, we're going to call it an assumption because we haven't actually proven it to be true yet. All right, but that's where it was based off of. If we agree, based on our observation, that yes, it really does seem like all three of these angles add up to 180, and these three angles add up to 180, and these three angles add up to 180, then we add all of them together, we would get the 540. And from that, we got a few formulas yesterday, which is where we were going with this. Three formulas that we need to have memorized. First of all, if I take any polygon, let's just say it's... Um, I don't know how many sizes are going to wind up being. Eight. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now assume for a moment that I actually used a straight edge. Okay, these lines are not all perfectly straight, but if they really were straight, um, we have nine sides. I have a formula that can tell me how many degrees would be in the sum of all of the angles. What is that formula, Audrey? One, two, three, four, five. Good, because we concluded you can draw n minus three. Diagonals. A triangle has zero, quadrilateral has one from any vertex, and so forth. Right? So we said from any vertex, we can draw n minus three diagonals, which means you always get one more triangle than you have diagonals, which is n minus two triangles, or in other words, n minus two straight angles in the sum. So if we had nine sides at your seats, how many degrees would be in the sum of all the angles? How many degrees would be in the sum of all the angles? 
Chris? If you took the time to do it, you should get, based on our conclusion, which again is technically not proven, you're right, we should get, it appears, 1,260 degrees. That's the easiest thing we're going to do? That is also, we will prove later that it has to be that formula. But we haven't proven it yet. So yes, it's still kind of just a conclusion that we've drawn. But yeah. What if we had seven sides at your seats? What if we had seven sides? How many degrees would we find in the sum of all the angles? Genesis? How many? 900. Very good. Because how many straight angles, class, if there are seven sides? How many straight angles? Five. Minus two, right? Subtract the two from the number of sides. What if we had ten sides? A ten-sided polygon. That would be a fun one to draw. We might do that later. I didn't call on you yet, Chris. Chris, how many sides? How many degrees? Now that you already blurted it out. 1,440 is correct. Did you all get that? What about 12 sides? And we're going to let Ethan take this one because I haven't heard from him in a while. 12-sided polygon. How many straight angles, first of all, Ethan? Ten. Which means? How many degrees? 1,800 degrees. How many plugged into your calculator and then thought, oh, duh, could have done that without a calc? Yeah, you know. All right. Now, we also went further, though, and we said, well, this doesn't appear to be regular, meaning what again, Kendall? Regular means? And what's that word that means all the angles are equal? And the side that means, a word that means all the sides are equal. There we go. So polygon is equilateral and equiangular. But imagine for a moment if this were equiangular somehow. Then how could I figure out how big each of those angles is? Genesis? Over n. Right. We already added it up and got 1,260 degrees. Just divide by the nine angles there are, and that will give you a total. Or in other words, if you want each angle, n minus 2 times 180, put it over n. So as you see, how many degrees would be theoretically, if this were equiangular, how many degrees would be in each angle of this polygon? Yeah. And what do we get for that? Genesis? 140 degrees. How many have the same answer? 140 degrees. All right. What if we had a, uh, an 11-sided polygon? 11-sided polygon. How many degrees? It doesn't come out evenly, but it has a repetend to it. How many degrees in each angle of a regular 11-sided polygon? Chris? 147.27 repeating. Good. We're both digits repeat. 147.27 repeating degrees would be correct. How many have the same answer there? All right. Uh, what if we had uh, uh, that 10-sided polygon again? 10-sided polygon. How many degrees in each angle if it's a regular 10-sided polygon? Audrey? Good, 144 degrees. How many have that answer? All right, so getting the hang of this here. Right, what if we had 15 sides on a polygon? It's a lot of sides on a polygon. How many degrees would be in each angle if it's equiangular? 156. 156 degrees. Did y'all get that same answer? All right, so we're good with that formula. If we have a regular polygon, though, and some of you mentioned this term moment, uh, moments ago, if you have a regular polygon, there is a clearly defined center point at which all the angle bisectors must meet. It looks like the old Chrysler symbol. I don't know if you remember. Your family might not be old enough for that. Chrysler symbol used to be that, and then they did that little long thing with the little wing-looking things on the... Anyway, uh, but anyway, that used to be the old Chrysler symbol. Anyway, um... But if we wanted to find each angle at the center of a regular polygon, what was that formula we had? Kendall? There's something about 360. You're right. Chris Halpern. N minus 2 times 180 over 360. Oh, no. Uh, 
360 degree angle. Good, 360 degrees, that is all here, divided by however many angles are formed there, which will match the number of sides. So it's just really easy formula, 360 over n. By the way, we did make this observation. An interior angle of a regular polygon and an angle at the center of a regular polygon will always share what relationship? Anyone? 34. No. What? <laughs> angle at the center and the interior angle will always be Chris observed it at the very end of the hour yesterday. 20. Supplementary. They'll always be supplementary to each other. But let's suppose we had a six-sided figure, a hexagon, regular hexagon. How many degrees at each angle at the center? Each angle at the center. It's a hexagon. Genesis. 60 degrees. Uh, what if we had a, a heptagon, seven sides? What if we had a heptagon, seven sides? How many degrees at each angle? angle at the center. Audrey? It just keeps on going, right, doesn't it? Yeah, that one's, all, that one's a little bit annoying. Almost would be easier as a fraction. So on your calculator, turn it into a fraction. On your calculator, turn it into a fraction. And what's the fraction then, Audrey? Um, Remember how to turn it into a fraction? And then hit the SUV again, and again, and again. Ah, OK, never mind. Do Shift and then the SUV, and that might do it for you. There it is. OK, that's what it is. Can't computer keyboard over there? Well, you have, a sh you have a second function button. It's the same thing. So it just calls it Shift on she that. She have an alt over there, too? <laughs> what? She have an alt? No, no, don't there? delete either. Uh, she has a backspace, though. Does she have an alt F4? <laughs> no. All right, so what did you get? Good. Sometimes if it comes out really strange with your decimal, go with the fraction. Might be the easier way. Anyway, 51 and 37 degrees. What about, uh, how many got that, by the way? You got that on the calculator? Okay, good. We just want to make sure we go back and forth between fractions and decimals. Um, what if we had 12 sides? How many degrees at each angle at the center? You type it in, you're like, oh, duh, I could have done that in my head, Ethan. Mm -hmm. 30 degrees. What about nine sides? See if you can do it in your head. Nine sides. How many degrees at each angle at the center? Chris? 40. 40 degrees, right? So 360 divided by 9, 36 divided by 9, then 4, then tack on this here. Why? 40 degrees. Why is your brain when God is your brain? I don't know. Exactly. Uh, questions oh. on this. <laughs> mathematicians are lazy. <laughs> exactly. I'm more lazy than the mathematician. I'm too lazy to type in the numbers when my brain has the answer that quick. Why would I wait all that time and type all those buttons and waste all those calories? <laughs> all of these. Well, well, I'm I'm the Do you see this? I need those calories to get going. <laughs> All right, turn your books to page 25. Turn your books to page 25. We're going to look at the same idea, but from a slightly different perspective, or you might say a different angle. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, <laughs> page 25 in your textbooks. Hey, you don't come here for good jokes. Probably didn't come for jokes anyway. All right, page, <laughs> page 25 in your textbooks. And I want you to look at the first problem at the top of the page, problem number five. Audrey's there. Audrey, nice and loud, read that problem for us. I love the wording there, right? <laughs> what are the uh, interior angles is 135. What is one of the angles at the center? Hence, we don't use that word often enough, henceforth and with all, how many <laughs> sides hath the polygon? All right, so anyway, um, this is kind of interesting, kind of looking at it from that other perspective. An interior angle is 135, so one of the angles at the center. How big is that going to be is the question. Well, what relationship exists between interior angle and angle at the center, class? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Supplementary, right? So very quickly, if we know 135 is interior, what's the angle at the center? Anyone? 45. 45 degrees. Take the supplement. And then it says, hence, <laughs> how many degree or how many sides must the polygon have? Two ways to approach this. The easy way is to use this formula. We know that 360 degrees over n gives us angle at the center, right? But if we know the angle at the center is 45 degrees, if I wanted to find the number of sides, I just have to figure out 360 divided by what equals 45. Make sense? Or perhaps another way to approach it is if you put the 45 over 1, you can turn this into a 
proportion. How do we solve proportions? Cross multiply, right? 45 times n? And of course, 360 times 1. And then just divide the 45 away. And what do we get? How many sides, class? Eight sides. There's another way to approach it. No, you didn't even have to find the angle at the center to figure that out. Because we know that if it's a regular polygon, and each angle is 135, our formula to find each angle is n minus 2 times 180 degrees over n. But if we know that each angle is 135 degrees, we can essentially do the same thing. Put this over 1. Turn it into a proportion, and then cross multiply to get. And let's go and distribute this while we multiply by the 1 to get 180n minus 360. And notice what happens. If I were to pull a double switch here, subtract the 135n from the 180n, what do we end up with? The same 45n. Pull the 360 over as a positive. So we get to the exact same equation, coming at it a little bit differently. So you see how if I gave you the interior angle, you could find the number of sides, as opposed to giving you the number of sides, finding the measured interior angle. Make sense? So then look at the next one. What if an interior angle is 108? Find the number of sides at your seats. If the interior angle of a regular polygon is 108 degrees, find the number of sides. supplement the angle at the center and then go to the 360 over n. What would be the angle at the center, anyone? 72. 72. No, no, I was asking that. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay? <laughs> the angle at the center must be 72 because they're supplementary. And you either use this formula, cross multiply, or that formula. Cross multiply. I'm sorry? That won't, that won't. This formula to me is easier, right? Um, now, you're going to get to the same point anyway, right? Because you're essentially going to get 180n minus 360 if you distribute. And again, you're going to end up subtracting and getting that same 72 in anyway. How many sides, class? Five. Five. Good. Uh, what about 144 degrees? I'm not at your seats. 144 degrees. How many sides? You get it? Look this way. to you, but most people don't memorize stuff like that. But if you want to, you're certainly welcome to. I mean, I knew that, but that's because I teach it and I use it all the time. So, yeah. All right, what about 120 degrees? 120 degrees. Good, you can do that one in your head. Nice, easy number to work with. What do we get here, class? Six. Six. Right, mentally, 120 means 60 at the center. How many 60s does it take to make 360? We'll take six of them. Do that one here. What about 150? You can do this one in your head too, I think. Try it. Try no calculator, just try thinking about it. 150 interior angle. Angle at the center. How many around? And what do we get? Class? 12. Good. 30 angle at the center takes 12 30s to give you a 360. Next one, 140 degrees. Might be able to do this one in your head. 140 degree interior angle. Kendall, how many 
sides? Nine. Nine sides. Very good. How many think in nine? All right. Good. Uh, what about 90? What about 90? This one you just regular poly on 90 degree angles. How many sides, class? Four. Four. It's a square, right? See, even picture the square there. Forget even thinking about the other angle and all of that stuff. It is square. Ooh. 128 and four sevenths degrees. <clears throat> well, you know. <laughs> Does the polygon have? 
How many? 5.6. All right. So we could pretty much make up any angle, right? So we have a 5.6 sided polygon. It's like saying the average family in America has 2.3 kids. I'm like, well, I mean, <laughs> we're like 2.3. Okay. And we're like, see, you see some people at Walmart like, you are the point three because you're not all there. But anyway, um, I don't know why we pick on Walmart so much. But anyway, uh, no, no, you can't have it. You can't. So basically, because n must be an integer, rather a natural number, no, you can't just pick any random angle. There are certain angles that work for certain numbers of sides, but you can't just make up whatever you want. Um, let's practice something we worked on yesterday in the time we've got remaining. We I showed you a couple ways in which we could, cons not construct, but draw regular polygons. So let's go and draw a regular polygon of eight sides. We'll call that a regular octagon, um, commonly known to us as a stop sign. Stop sign. Yeah, we're going to draw a stop. Okay. Yeah, draw a stop sign using compass and straight edge. Now, I taught you two ways to make stop sign or to make polygon in general using a compass straight edge protractor. Volunteer to start. So you can set your book aside. Yeah, you can set your book aside. Oh, let's have the paper out. And um, who remembers how we did this at the end of the hour yesterday? Ethan. Ethan thinks he does. Ethan, brave man. Thank you, sir, for speaking up. Way to be a leader. Man among boys and girls. Um, <laughs> girls. Uh, Audrey, Kendall, Genesis, and girl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tattoo tackle a couple of them. Draw a straight line. line. Draw a straight line. I like that. Yeah, All right, now what? Put a, dot Put a dot in the middle of the line. I like how this is going. Oh, you really? I do, yes. Okay. You're off to a great start. Uh, Put your uh, protractor. All right. It'll be the You want a uh, octagon? I want an octagon. <laughs> um, we might want to do a little math before we start marking angles. Yeah, maybe right? we should do that. Let's do some math. What kind of math <laughs> should we do, Ethan? <laughs> um, a man with a plan. I like octagon that. The octagon has eight sides. It does have eight sides. 350 over eight. Eight. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I like it. He's going without the calculator here. Way to go, Ethan. Yeah, no. Oh, no, no. He <laughs> broke down. He chickened out. Oh. Uh, 45. 45 degrees. There we go. 45 degrees. Okay, so what do I do now that we've done a little bit of math, Ethan? Life is better with a little bit of math. Yeah. Only a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Put the line of the protractor up with the dot, okay? First oh, 45 left. degree angle, that's right oh, here. Left side, yeah. And okay. then you do a left side too, but it's. Okay, let's do a left side 45 also. You sure about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Normally we just kind of keep going around in order 45, 45 more, 45 more, and so forth. As opposed to, for instance, uh, remember with the five sided yesterday, we did 72. First 45, though, good, okay. But remember, we said we couldn't mark it, then do another 45, mark it, do another 45, and so and forth. The next at 90. But the next one would be at 90, good. So rather than moving it, let's just make another mark at 90, because that would be 45 more. The next one would be. Which does happen to be the other 45, but it just happens to work that way here. And then what's the next 45 going to be? Oh, no, it's mine. 180 again. Now, again, this only works for an even number of sides because we have eight of them. <coughs> you're going to wind up with a straight through line here, straight through diagonal. So that works great. Also, because there's an even number of sides, all the marks above the diag this, this straight line come down below as well. So we can simply draw them straight through. This does not work if there's an odd number of sides, but it works really well when there's an even number of sides. So we like even-sided polygons. All right, so we've got all these diagonals drawn. And um, 
Now what do you do? It's compass. As your alarm. Yeah. Uh, the straight line. At the, the top. Do what with the who? Uh, you measure one of the lines, right? Measure one of them? And then you like, yeah, and then you go around. Go around? <laughs> a big circle? Mm -hmm. We can do that. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's a circle now. It is a circle now, yes. Um, well, you need to look like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, dude, but we were looking for where this crossed over the line, so there's a couple times it missed. So here's my admonition. Dude. Don't make it that big. Make it a little bit smaller, yeah. and then you can yeah. go around with your circle. Okay. So that way you actually know it's going to hit all the lines because I'm lazy. And uh, now it looks like a wagon wheel or something. Anyway. <laughs> But uh, yeah, well, and then once we've got those, we can connect those dots. And we've got our stop sign. Only problem is our stop sign is tilted like it got caught in Hurricane Laura. <laughs> if you're going to get it that way, watch out in the middle. And you probably wouldn't get any fringe or any fall from it. Certainly no days out of school. Oh, I know. I know. Rough life. Hurricanes never hit us. Oh, so we For real. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our stop sign's a little bit crooked here, right? So if we were, you know, there's the top and the bottom. So there we go. Uh, something nice. like that. All right, now it almost looks like a spider web, too. All right, questions on this. Easy. So, what if we wanted a regular called a nonagon? Well, let me guess. It has it's nine it's sides. It's a uh, no. I. Regular nonagon. Somebody else, some other brave soul, what ought we to do for our regular nonagon? Genesis. Draw a line. <laughs> Then what? No. Not for odd. You don't put the dot in the middle, put the dot at one end. Because, Genesis, how big, let's do a little math real quick, how big are our angles going to be if we've got nine sides? Right? 40 degrees. Now here's the problem, Genesis. Do the math with me here real quick. We're going to put a mark at 40, right? Then at 80. Then at 120. Then at 160. Do you notice, class, it doesn't go to 180. That's why we can't put the dot in the middle. And when we draw these lines, we only draw upward from the dot, not through the dot. And this is why they call it an odd number. <laughs> it comes out looking kind of odd. So there's one, two, three, four angles. What do you suppose we would do now? Now, not from the starting point. Well, technically, as you could from the starting point. I like to continue off of where I've already built, but technically, yeah. either way, as long as we do 40, mm -hmm. 80, 120, and 160 again. And again, just come straight outward and downward. Yes, sir. There we go. And it should leave you, you can check it, your final angle should be your ninth and final 40. And I'm off about a degree and a half to two degrees. We'll still finish the same way though. Take your compass, open up some amount, make that circle around, 
and connect all the dots. And for sake of time, I'm going to spare the straight edge, but connect the dots to get your regular nonagon. There it is. Wow. All right. Your only homework is to study. <laughs> study. I'll study. I know you quit tomorrow. We do have a test coming up Monday. It will cover sections 1.1 to 1.14. That will be in lesson 16. Section 1.1 to 1.14. That's pages, if you want to study in your book, 1 to 24. Otherwise, just study everything you put in your notebook. If you memorize everything in your notebook, let me say that word again. If you memorize everything in your notebook, you'll be good. So I no longer like geometry. <laughs> <laughs> this is why most nights the homework is simply to study, study because I really, really need you, know, you to study. I don't have time to do this class.